What's up, friends? Welcome to the Easter season. My name is Ashley, and I'm so excited to be here with you, although I kind of just made a mess. <laughs> but can you blame me? It's officially the time for the best candy of the year. Marshmallow peeps, jelly beans, sweetheart chicks, eggs, bunnies, Reese's, peanut butter eggs, and my favorite, nerds. <laughs> One of my favorite things about Easter besides candy, traditions. There are certain things about Easter that I look forward to every year, no matter what. So when I was growing up, every Easter, we would get dressed up so fancy. I mean, hats, dresses, and we'd go to church. But after church, we'd always find a park and have the biggest picnic with so much food. Now, while the candy and the decorations and the games and the fun Easter traditions are cool, Easter is really a time to remember and celebrate an event that drags drastically shifted the entire world. An event that shows us that no matter who we are, what we do, or what we think about all this faith stuff, Jesus loves us. What comes to mind when you hear this phrase? Jesus loves you no matter what. Maybe you've heard people say it before. It might be the kind of thing your parents say, or your grandma always talks about, or something you hear every week when you're at church. To you, this isn't just something you hear about at Easter. It's something you hear all the time. It might even be something you believe. You show up at church, you read your Bible, and you want to get to know Jesus more because you believe he loves you no matter what. After all, it sounds pretty good, right? I mean, the idea that the Jesus we talk about here at church every single week loves you no matter what, that's pretty awesome. Or maybe you've never really thought about it before. Sure. All this Easter stuff sounds pretty good. And the idea that anybody would love you no matter what, well, that's not too bad either. But Jesus? <laughs> Maybe you haven't really given much thought to him or how he feels about you. You've got school and sports and siblings and friends and activities and social media and video games and all the other very real things that take up space in your mind. All this Jesus stuff and what it has to do with you, you've just never really thought about it. Or maybe you hear the phrase, Jesus loves you no matter what, and wonder if it could be true. At Easter, we talk about Jesus dying on the cross and then coming back to life to show us that he loves us no matter what. But if you're honest, that feels a little hard to believe. Maybe it's easier to believe God is angry or disappointed or distant no matter what. If he's this big, all-knowing God, that means he knows the things you've done, for better, and for worse. He knows you've cheated on tests, or lied to your parents, or shown up at that party you knew you weren't supposed to go to. He knows the way you've treated other people or the things you've tried to keep secret. And because of that, you feel like it would be almost impossible to believe that he could love you no matter what. Well, whatever comes to mind for you when you think about Jesus loving you no matter what, here's one thing I want you to know. It's true. No matter what we think, no matter what we feel, no matter what we do, Easter is the proof that Jesus loves us totally and completely. How do I know? Well, not only because I've experienced it, but because I've learned a thing or two about it from one of Jesus's closest friends. One of those friends was John. Okay, here's a quick backstory. John was Jewish, so he grew up studying the scriptures, what we now call the Old Testament. Those scriptures tell the story of God and the history of Jewish people. But like many Jewish people at the time, John was waiting for God to send the savior, the rescuer that he had promised to send. It had been a long, long time of waiting for God to fulfill his promise. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Now, I don't know about you, but when I have to wait and wait and wait on someone, I start to wonder if something is up. Oh, maybe they're angry at me. Maybe I've done something wrong. So I think it's fair to guess that John might have wondered the same thing. Maybe he wondered if God was angry at him and his people. What was God up to? Maybe he'd abandoned them or forgotten about them or was disappointed in them. We can't totally be sure what John was wondering, but we do know John was human. Because of that, I guess at some point he probably questioned whether or not the God he learned about when he was growing up was really a loving and good God. If he really would fulfill all the promises he had made, and I would bet that John wondered what was taking God so long. But then something really big happened. God sent his son Jesus to the world. 
And as we see in the beginning of the second part of the Bible called the New Testament, Jesus met John and John began to follow him. In fact, John became one of Jesus's closest friends when he was on earth. So being that up close and personal to Jesus, you think that John probably got it right away. He saw several miracles that Jesus performed. He saw the way Jesus treated people. John heard Jesus preach powerful sermons about the kingdom of God. And he heard Jesus talk about how in God's kingdom, the hungry are fed, the thirsty are filled, refugees are welcomed in, naked are clothed, sick are cared for, and prisoners are freed. John listened to all the stuff Jesus taught about what it means to love others. And because because of that, John just figured out that God really did love all of us no matter what, right? Well, not exactly. See, the stories in the Gospels, which are the four books that detail Jesus' life on earth, shows us time and time again the way Jesus' followers struggled to understand his teaching. There were several times where even his closest followers were confused about what Jesus was talking about and doing. Why did Jesus talk to certain people? How did Jesus have control over the storms? What did Jesus mean when he said, blessed are the poor? Jesus' followers heard what he had said and saw what he did, but they had questions. They had doubts. They didn't always get it. Does that sound familiar? They were like us. But then something else happened, something that we celebrate every year at Easter. And that something changed everything. That something? was the resurrection. So your first question might be, what do you mean the resurrection? And your second one is probably, why does this matter to me or my friends? Well, let me break it down. To resurrect something means to bring it back to life. So at Easter, we remember when Jesus died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. And then we celebrate the fact that he walked out of the tomb three days later. He came back to life. <laughs> which is what we call the resurrection. And why is this a big deal? Well, for starters, Jesus said lots of things while he was alive, including that he was gonna rise from the dead. So if he had stayed dead after he was killed, that would have meant that everything he said during his lifetime wasn't true. But as we know, that's not what happened. Jesus did come back to life, just like he said he would. And that meant that everything else he said during his life was true too. John, who grew up studying the scriptures, would have known that death was usually a consequence of sin. So when somebody committed a sin or made a mistake, the punishment would have been death. In order to avoid that death, something needed to be sacrificed in order to take the punishment from that person. And that's where Jesus came in. See, God sent Jesus to earth to sacrifice himself for us, to pay the price for our sins to make sure that we don't have to carry the weight of our mistakes or experience their consequences. But then Jesus came back to life. He defeated death. That means that death doesn't have any power anymore. Even though we will physically die, Jesus made a way for that not to be the end of the story. If we believe in him, then we get to know that we will live with him forever, no matter what. And that is something worth celebrating. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross changed so much for so many of us, including John. John didn't even need to wonder if God had given up on keeping his promise. Jesus' resurrection showed John that God did really love him. And it also showed him that God loves people who aren't like him too. God loves every person enough that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. He loves every person enough to defeat death. He loves every person enough to make a way for John and for all of us to be in a relationship with him that will last forever. See, Easter reminds us we're loved no matter what. And we know this because John wrote it down. Later in his life, he reflected on his experiences and wrote this in a letter to other believers. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. John was there when this all happened. He walked with Jesus, watched him get crucified on a cross, and then saw him alive again three days later. When John wrote about this love that God has for all of us and the sacrifice of Jesus, 
He knew what he was talking about. Easter reminds us we're loved no matter what. All this stuff John wrote about in the verses that we looked at, all the stuff that reminded him that Jesus really did love everyone no matter what, well, that same stuff applies to our lives too. Let's look at this verse again, but this time I wanna say it in a different way. I wanna say it as if it was written just for you. God showed how much he loved you by sending his one and only son into the world so that you might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that you loved God, but that he loved you and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away your sins. Whoa. So what does this scripture have to do with each of us? Well, what's awesome about scripture is that we can personalize it as if it was written just for us. Personalizing a verse like this helps remind us of what God says is true for all of us. This scripture that we just read about God's love is true for you and it's true for me. And that's why Easter matters today. It didn't just matter for people who lived thousands of years ago. Easter was the event in history that changed the way each of us can relate to God forever. We can have a relationship with God because of what we celebrate at Easter. Easter reminds us we're loved no matter what. Maybe this is the first time you've heard some of this stuff today, or maybe you're just hearing it in a new way, a way that makes you wanna lean in and learn a little more, a way that makes you wanna really believe that you're loved no matter what. Well, your group is a great place to talk about that. We have groups so that we can have a safe place to process what we're feeling or thinking when it comes to our faith, our family, and our friends. And it's also a place to share with adults like your group leader when you have big questions or wanna take big steps in your faith. If that's where you are today, talk to your group leader about that. Remember, Easter reminds us we're loved no matter what.